Hello, so Andam Lundwichbampato is my name. I want to speak about the city where I'm born, Kitwe. And uh, I want to relate it to what happens to me when I'm going through my transformation in my bipolar or whatever it's called. Typically what happens is um, I hear, uh, I can, I don't know how to translate it, but the word, they're called kaponyas, which is the thugs of Kitwe. I hear them singing uh, and drumming. They're like drumming African drums and they're celebrating and they're waiting to come to join me wherever I am. You see, and this is whilst other things are also going on. But I just want to fixate on the actual Kitwe part because the whole time they say wherever I am, whatever happens, they're going to come and they'll join me. And if they have to die in the process, they're going to die. You know, it's, it's a very traumatic um, experience I go through. This is just before, like, this is like when it really gets extreme, just before they take me into the hospital and they inject me and they put me to sleep. But I just wanted to fixate on it because what happens is I've got body gestures that I do that uh, kind of like correlate with the signs that I have identified with them to say, when I do this, it's going to mean that. When I do that, it's going to mean this. And funny enough, when I went to see uh, the great shaman, Kredo uh, Motua here in South Africa, and I asked him about how, um, what he knows about uh, the animal uh, noises and the animal signs and uh, things like that. And he says, well, that's been done. It's been done for a very long time. It's nothing new. So I guess in the shaman language, what I get to do is somehow I tap into that uh, world, which unfortunately I've never been initiated and I've never been trained to understand it. But at least when I went to meet him and I asked him about that, he confirmed to me to say, yes, that's something that we've used that we've used so long ago. I mean, it's, it's, it's nothing new. But for me, it comes to me in that form and it's, it's quite surprising because I, I, I can only relate it to the Kitwe people, but basically what happens is I've got body signs and body gestures. I might, some sometimes I will, I might even like run or I'll go outside and I'll start making certain signs and the people around me will just think, you know, I've lost my mind. But in my mind, what's actually happening is I can hear the people in Kitwe, the thugs, like uh, I'll mention a, a a place that I remember in Kitwe very well is KMB uh, station. This is where like you find um, most of like the serious hardcore thugs. That's where I feel at home. I feel safe there. And it's a bus terminal. All you find there is just core boys. Well, boys that are just uh, getting people on the buses. Some are buying. Some are, are just selling uh, sweets. Some have got shops. Some have got cabs. Things like that. But that's where it takes me back to. And for me, I feel so comfortable, so safe amongst those people. And this is part of the process that happens to me when I'm going through what I go through. And it, it's, it's the most exciting thing because as I'm doing the body gestures, I start to smile and I start to feel liberated. I still start to feel alive. I start to feel like I'm, I'm, I'm me again because all those people are supporting me. And those are the people that I can connect with. Maybe, I don't know, maybe it goes back to the days when my mother was in politics and I used to go there a lot and I'd commune to those people or talk to them, I don't know. But she would do most of the work anyway and we had other people as well. I would just be part of the, you know, the group and things like that. But all I'm saying to you is I feel alive and I feel at home because that's, that's my city, that's where I was born and that's a part of me that will never leave me no matter what happens. It doesn't matter what state I'm in, there's always a part somewhere inside of me that calls for them. Thank you.